Junie is a very old style town, but the old guys, they love to just come, just sit and have a chat. Must like it, I've been here 71 years. <laughs> Something was wrong and you didn't know how to fix it. Billy knew. It's Billy, B-I-L-L-Y. Go downstairs and change your keg for you if you were busy. They go, Billy, I went, okay. What one, they'd go Carlton Draft, or down I'd go, down the cellar. And all like the chalkboards out the front of the pubs, it's all written by Billy. I have made spelling mistakes. Three weeks before someone picked it up. You just pay him with a beer and he'll do whatever you need done. On the road again. Just can't wait to drink another two is old with my friend. We're a fair way away from Sydney. She's uh, four hours, maybe a bit more, five. And uh, just off the Olympic Highway, you're gonna find this little town. Some of the locals, uh, you know, have just got some incredible stories. I can't wait to bring them to life and, uh, and, and share some of their stories. This is what we do, this is what we love, this is why we do it. Go and find out stuff that you've got no idea about. And in a beautiful part of the world, like just stunning. Tucked away in the heart of New South Wales, just up the road from Wagga, lies the historic township of Junee. Renowned for its rich railway heritage, Junee is a place where the rhythm of the tracks set the pace to daily life. Dominating the only roundabout in town stands the majestic Junee Hotel. A grand edifice, once on the brink of fading into history. Enter Brendan and Emma, a young family brimming with determination embarking on the daunting task of restoring this architectural gem to its former splendour. I think what drew us to it was the long balcony, great facade, characteristics inside the building, and also the town of Gina itself. Billy, V-I-L-L-Y. Something was wrong and you didn't know how to fix it. Billy knew. Go downstairs and change your keg for you if you were busy. They go, Billy, I went, okay. What one, they go Carlton Draft, or down I'd go, down the cellar. And all like the chalkboards out the front of the pubs, it's all written by Billy. People come through town and say, oh, are you still doing your blackboards? I have made spelling mistakes. Three weeks before someone picked it up. And you just pay him with a beer and he'll do whatever you need done. This is the jumper I wore in 1975 and it still fits me. <laughs> Loves his football. He's just a pot of knowledge for football. I was the player. Then I was a strapper. Yeah, then upstairs on the microphone. That's my old office. It's the old broadcast box. I sit there with the microphone and I haven't been in here for a while. 2012, we were made life members. I swallowed a gecko after the 86 grand. Oh, and we'll face it, the next person that tells a joke has got to scull his beer. And I sculled my beer after I told a joke and they all started laughing because they put a lizard in it. <laughs> It's never passed. <laughs> I've checked every time. Junie is such a big rugby town. Obviously, Laurie Daly's from here. There's a good spirit of sporting here. Ray Warren, there's a statue across the road from the hotel. The Junie Diesels, they've just returned back to the group nine competition after a hiatus. Once those Wobber teams have come and participate in their sport, they stop in and have a look at the pub and check it out because it's, there's not too many old historic pubs like these left in the Riverina. You can take the boy from the bush. You can't take the bush out of the boy. Billy, he just loves the world of football. Billy grew up with Laurie. He loves to chat. Drop, drop his name here and there. He loves to chat. 1986, Brian Gray was the coach. The big moment for all of us. He put Laurie in it at 16 years old. It was 5'8". And it was, it was very heavy. It was wet. He said to Laurie, it's heavy, just turn him around. So Laurie's kicked two field goals in the first half. Diesel goes to Dale, he's going to have a shot of field goal. That's the first point of the game. Good kick by Laurie Daly. 2 0 at half time. Mick Willis scores a try in the second half. Dave Lowry, 10 6, grand final. That's a good try. Don Ferner and Don McIntyre walk up the checkbook and the rest is history. And he's a one club person. Yeah, nice. Yep. It was basically done by uh, Mr. Crowley, full founder of Jenny, finished it in 1878 and then eventually moved on to building his home, Monte Cristo. This pub sits on the forefront of Jenny's history, opposite the railway which Jenny's built on. 
the heart of Jenny Hotel, the bar. We're trying to recreate what it once was in new modern times. We encourage people if they're on their own, sit up here, have a meal at the bar, have a drink at the bar. Um, and we try to connect people with other people when they're sitting there because sometimes people travel for work and it is lonely by yourself. Until Brendan and Emma took over, the stools weren't even here. The stools, you could never sit at, at the, the bar. You always had to go sit at one of the other tables. Old guys that just want to come in and just sit and have, have a chat. As you can hear at the moment, we've got trains backwards and forwards, so we're very lucky and fortunate to see Australian agriculture and primary producers as well as um, the mines and everybody else go between Sydney and Melbourne transporting our, our goods and services. A bit of red, let's go. I'll show you out to the heart of Genie, the veranda. A beautiful outlook here. Checking out the rest of Genie as they go past while we're here having a sneaky drink, enjoying life. It's what a beautiful building to have and we're very lucky to be custodians of it. Yeah, so it was built in the late 1800s, so the railway line was coming out of Sydney, progressively building towards Melbourne. So they were approached to build this facility to accommodate the railway workers, the farmers, the pastoral. So it's built on the old grand scale, We've got 13 foot ceilings, large open plain areas, We've got a formal dining rooms. There used to be an old barber shop where we've got the snooker room. So in the early days, all the gentlemen would come in and get a haircut. And after having a haircut, come and have a quiet midi at the bar. But also in the early days, there was um, some closed rooms for the gentlemen where they had the, the elite uh, solicitors and the bankers and the policemen would come in and, and have drinks behind closed quarters where all the general workers and the farmers would sit at the main public bar. In the early days, there used to be a separate ladies' room. Um, traditionally, pubs were built that ladies weren't allowed into the hotels. So they had to have their own discreet little room out the back that they could visit and have a sneaky drink on the side while their husbands sat at the front bar. Uh, this place um, had an old back dirty car park. In the recent years, it's been transformed into a uh, lush green um, manicured landscaped area. So one of the unique stories that we've come across when we've taken over this hotel is this particular room, room 15. It's got a writing on the door called Private Parlour. So the story goes is that back in the early days that used to be a lady of the house and several ladies of the house. And this used to be their private facilities where they'd bring the gentleman up, come downstairs, do the rounds around the hotel, invite a man upstairs and come up here and that's where they'd entertain them. Aside from managing the day-to-day -day operations of the hotel and family life, Brendan and Emma have taken on a mammoth task, renovating the upstairs accommodation. It's all part of their journey, and so with sleeves rolled up and determination in their hearts, they're breathing new life into this historic gem, one nail at a time. We saw an opportunity to take this pub to the next level, and it's got the great bones. I think it just needs a bit of love, lots of painting. Yeah, back from scratch, just clean the place up a bit. We're just doing stage by stage. Unfortunately, people in here who probably didn't understand or respect all the heritage of this beautiful building, the floorboards were filthy. The rooms upstairs was left in a bit of a state of disrepair. So filthy mess, not livable. Currently renovating 32 rooms, putting new furnishing, new curtains, new bedding anything and everything, and also updating our bathrooms to make it more accessible for everybody. This short-term stay is very vital for people, you know, moving to the next job, moving to the next town. Just for a week or so, it can help and benefit people. So, unfortunately, it is a bit of a time-consuming effort, as well as running the hotel downstairs. So hopefully we'll leave it in a better place than we got it. We do a lot of operational side, hands-on, particularly. I work here seven days a week during the days. So that we arrange, bring our own kegs out, unload them out of the vehicle, roll them down to the cellar, put them in the cool room, clean your beer lines, and then the next day you might bring out food and, and you bring that in, put it in your cool room, rotate the food. But in between all that, you, you're vacuuming, you're cleaning, you're cleaning windows, cleaning your bar. Um, so there's, there's hundreds and hundreds of little jobs um, not big jobs, but they're repetitive jobs. And, if you, and having a good team around you is key. It's you need a pub, you gotta have pubs. Couple of beers, loosens up the tongue and the mind, and uh, once you get it out, 
Uh, sometimes it's the best thing in the world. People can get together and have a yarn and that sort of stuff, and the pubs like this are really important for that community basis. Some of the conversations out of our bar floors are very intriguing. I'll leave it at that. This drawing, my daycare mum asked me who it was, and I said, that's my sugar daddy. And she goes, who's your sugar daddy? Brett Kamali from Cronulla Sharks. <laughs> I was full. <laughs> you know, it used to be a big railway town. A lot of railway work. It was a hub between Sydney and Melbourne. So in the old days, there'd be a lot of passenger trains. It used to change crew here. And they had the loco up, the big roundhouse up there. And there's a lot of blokes worked up there. The town profited, the shops everywhere. From the lively atmosphere of the Journey Hotel to the ambitious undertakings of its renovation, Brendan and Emma's story epitomises the spirit of resilience and community that defines this little town. It gives us a good passion about meeting our patrons. We have good conversations, so it's, it's all about providing that service. Because at the end of the day, we all run busy lives, get distracted, but I think communication, uh, connection, human touch is a big thing and that's why we offer a seat at the bar for anyone and everyone. We're a young family having a go. So as we bid farewell to Junie, let's raise a glass to the enduring charm of country pubs, the dedication of those who preserve them and those unbelievable stories forged within their walls.